Hey, if anybody's here for the YCIG meeting, can you just come to the central table here? It's just, it'll be easier to, to talk to everyone. And if, if you're not here for the YCIG meeting, can, you, can I please ask you to um, make your way out? Because we only have an hour and we, we have other things to do too. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks. Thank you very much for attending um, this session. And uh, if so, this is the this is the an this is the start of the annual um, general meeting of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. For those, uh, if if you don't know what the YCIG is, basically, it's um, the YCIG is a, an international. Well, first of all, it's a recognized um, dynamic coalition of uh, of the IGF. Um, for youth to come together and coordinate and uh, and uh, you know really advocate for youth uh, youth related <coughs> issues, whether that be something related directly to youth or whether that be for a for a, uh, youth perspectives. Um, my name is Michael Ogia. I'm uh, I was one of the interim uh, steering committee members um, for this year, and basically uh, what happened was after the last meeting that we had, which was in Gu Guadalajara at IGF uh, 2016, we, we basically coalesced around one central issue that we needed to, uh, to address, and that was the fact that we had to update our charter. Our charter was severely out of date, and there was a lot of things that we, we needed to edit about it, we needed to update. So what happened was we, uh, we opened up, basically, um, the YCIG opened up um, nominations for an interim steering committee, since, uh, since none of us were actually elected. Um, and we and there were five people that were basically including myself that were appointed to this interim um, steering committee to basically do two things one was to oversee the charter revision process and the second one was uh, basically to to make sure that the, the that the YCIG uh, fulfills um, its uh, its its required um, fulfills basically the, the requirements of being a dynamic coalition, which includes submitting uh, a midterm report, um, organizing the session at, uh, at the end of the year, et cetera, um, and liaising with the IGF secretariat, which is also part of, of what we do. Um, so there, there were uh, four other members uh, with myself, but unfortunately um, only one of them uh, is here at the IGF, and, and, but they're, um, I guess, in another session. 
Um, so basically, the, the most, uh, I, don't have, I don't have a presentation or anything, but the most, really the, the biggest thing that we've done this year as the YCIG is update our charger. It took about three, or it took about four months, but we finally got it approved and ratified, and while, um, you know, and of course it's open to amendments over time, but the fact is is that it, we at least have a much more, uh, we have a working document now, that, or it's not a working document, we have a much better document to go to work with now, and something that was really exciting is that we finally we had our first um, election, our, our first steering committee election. Um, so now there there is a lot more. Um, so now that we can at least we can at least have a much more formal structure going forward in terms of who is our leadership, what do they do, how do we hold them accountable, etc. So the first thing I wanted, uh, well, the first thing I, um, I wanted to do, well, that was basically a look back. To be honest, um, the YCIG, and there's a lot of things that we really need to talk about, but we can do that more toward the, the end of the session. So that was basically kind of one of the highlights, um, was our charter and uh, coordinating, and another big, oh, and obviously, a couple other big things that we've done, in case you're not aware of them. One is that now on the YCIG website, there is a getting involved guide, which, is, which can be just a hub of um, how to participate in internet governance. If you go to the YCIG website, which, uh, let me just, which is just ycigweb.wordpress.com, uh, you can get it to it that way. And is, do we still, we don't have a domain, do we, David? Yeah, we do have, this would be youthcig.org. Okay, youth, basically youth, uh, youthcig at or, or, .org, okay. And so um, if you go to the Getting Involved Guide, that is basically a step-by-step -step guide of how to um, engage in various processes and, and different organizations, different fora, et cetera. And aside from that, we updated the, um, AB, the IGF ABCs list, which is also on the, on the website, which provides a step-by-step -step guide of how to participate in the Internet Governance Forum. Um, it was it was translated also um, into Spanish thanks to Israel for that as well as the port as in Portuguese and uh, I think uh, Lua uh, did that I, I don't think he's here right now though um, so thank you to that for that and lastly um, with that said we have a couple people uh, that just wanted to address the YCIG real quick because they need to they need to go and it, because. Well, you know, we got, we, for instance, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit, but we did, um, we, we, we have four uh, newly elected um, steering committee members. I'll introduce that in a second. But one of the issues that we had, for instance, is that nobody from Eastern Europe wanted to, to actually run for the position. So it just goes to show how Eastern European, um, Eastern and Southeastern European uh, outreach is definitely something we should, we should do more of specifically in the, uh, the coming year. So with that said, I want to introduce one of our members. Oh yeah, Lua, thank you very much for the Portuguese translation of, I, of ABC's IGF. Um, so first of all, I want to introduce Sonia uh, Herring, uh, you know, please, uh, who is going to talk a bit about the CDIG, the Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance Youth Initiatives, as well as IGF Turkey. And if you could, um, Sonia, could just like leave it to uh, like three to five minutes, just to uh, yeah, get through it. Yeah, so hi everyone and hello to old members, welcome to new members. Like Michael said, uh, I'm Susanya Herring. I'm on the newly elected executive committee of Southeast, <laughs> Southeast, uh, Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance. And shortly, first I want to uh, talk about the two uh, capacity building programs we have. One is youth, CDIG Youth School. The second one is the CDIG Fellowship. They both started uh, this year in 2017 at the meeting that took place in Ohrid, Macedonia in May earlier. And the, the 2018 18 meeting will be in Slovenia, Ljubljana. The exact dates aren't uh, announced yet, but it will be held in May, and the capacity building programs will continue. And so I would all, uh, especially want to talk about youth school, but also you could consider the follow fellowship as well. Our website is cdig.net. You can find the details there. Uh, the our website had been recently hacked, so it's just like renovating. There might be a few things missing, but feel free to come up to me during the session or after, and uh, yeah, you can ask me in person or contact me uh, through email, social media, whatever. 
So yeah, uh, just like Michael said, uh, we didn't have a candidate from the region, so we'd really like to increase the participation of the region, and I think CDIG's Youth School is a great opportunity to do this. And also, normally, the annual meeting is just one day this year from now on. Well, in 2018 it will be two maybe even three days which uh, one of the days will be dedicated to the capacity building programs so again I encourage encourage everyone to uh, apply and also uh, the region isn't uh, strictly Europe so like Turkey is in it and uh, I think Georgia and Armenia and a few more countries so it's Southeast uh, Europe and the neighboring countries and also uh, I'd like to speak very shortly about youth uh, IGF Turkey as well. Well, there was another member uh, here this week at the IGF, but she had to leave early. Uh, we had the third youth IGF Turkey in Istanbul this year. Uh, actually, it hasn't even been a month at the end of November, and it was the most bottom-up, inclusive, and transparent one ever because before we didn't have a budget to implement certain things. And uh, thankfully this year we had and we were able to start a travel fund and we were able to bring uh, youth participants from other parts of Turkey and not just Istanbul and the capital Ankara. And uh, we talked about many topics. We uh, formed the program with via open calls and feedback from the community and uh, and what else? I won't get into much detail. Our address is igfturkey.org. Also, that's the last book that I didn't tell you, but it's um, two more sentences. Uh, we're, we'll be publishing a good practice guide on European youth in, uh, internet governance forums. Uh, po possibly within, it will be in the first month of 2018. So before the end of uh, January, it will be available uh, as digital copies. But it is European Youth IGF's good practice one, but they, we all have so many things in common. I think uh, everyone can uh, benefit from it. So yeah, thank you for coming here and participating and looking forward to the continuing the discussion. And thank you again. Thanks, Sonia. Thank you, Sonia. And, uh, yeah. and, for all, and for all of you, the work that you do, especially in the region to uh, promote um, to youth involvement. Um, I'm, one thing I forgot to mention is that if anybody here is not a member of the YCIG, it's not a complicated process to become one. All you have to do is subscribe to our Google group and be under the age of 35, or rather between the ages of 13 and 35. That was what we finally came to very rough consensus on as being our definition of youth, specifically because one of the challenges that we face is, and I, 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 sorry if I'm repeating myself, if anybody was in the morning session, but basically, you know, every region has its own issues, every region has its own challenges, and every region has their own ways of, of functioning down to the granular level of the, na the national and, the, and the, even the sub-regional approaches. So the fact is, as an international kind of coordinating body, we have a, a huge amount of challenges to overcome, especially when it comes to how to engage youth, how to, what, what exactly do we want to be? Do we want to have a, do we want to be a, a platform? Do we want to have a central message? These kinds of things are difficult. One of those that we, we found was even defining youth, uh, defining our definition of youth, which was really and truly why we even engaged in the charter revision process to begin with. We wanted to update that, that language. But we, we eventually settled on 13 to 35. It's the broadest range that we could come up with, 13, because that's the first, uh, that's the year, uh, that's the age whenever you're allowed uh, to use platforms, legally speaking, uh, that, you know, such as Facebook, Twitter, whatever. And then 35, because that was the maximum um, level that the African Union uh, described as being uh, youth. And so we wanted to be as inclusive to the various descriptions as we could be. Um, so with that said, uh, was there any, uh, so um, was there anybody here from Youth Observer tonight? Yeah. Lua. Lua? Lua, did you uh, want to present uh, uh, something about something that you did, uh, something the Youth Observatory did? Uh, you can if you want to, yeah, and just take two to three minutes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Israel is our like senior youth because we have like a different uh, strict age, we're like 30. But if you have to 30, you can be like a senior. You can participate, but you can vote and 
be a part oh, of it. Of, of, of course. And yeah, if yeah. you're not, if you're under the age of, of 13, or if you're 12 or under, or 36 and over, you can be an observer, which all that means is that as an observer, um, you can still be on the mailing list and everything, but you don't have the right to vote. So that's, that's the biggest difference. All of that's covered in the charter. So without further ado, Luan, did you want to say a few words about yeah, yeah. something you're working on? And yeah, please introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Luan. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm part of the Youth Observatory, which is like a project of the Youth Interest Special Group in, within, ICAN, within ISAAC. And we've been working for the last two years. And we've been working also in being at these forums to have like our voice heard and also working in capacity building in our countries. We have uh, members in all the Latin American and Caribbean uh, countries. So we've been doing some capacity building in schools. We've been creating like local content. We've been doing like some workshops at universities and high schools. So uh, just today we've been like uh, selected to our new directors. Uh, because our directors we changed during two years, so the, our election ended yesterday. So I guess have more work uh, for the la for the next two years, and our objective, like right now, is to get worldwide. So if you want to join us, is just go to if you are Isaac member, you can subscribe to be at the youth in special interest group at the the website of of Isaac. And you can see more about our job. And mm, this year we release a, we publish a book, uh, which is available in English, Portuguese, and Spanish. So you can all download the PDF, which, which is in our website. Uh, I can't remember right now, but if you go to Google or DuckDuckGo and put Youth Observatory website, you can find us. Um, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lua. And so really uh, something that I've been looking very, very forward to and without very much, very further ado, first I want to, um, is with great pleasure that I can actually now in front of all of you dissolve the interim steering committee and finally transition to our first post-charter elected steering committee who is being represented today by, um, by Nadia. Um, on my left, who is representing the Western, uh, Western Europe and others group, as well as Israel, who is re representing the Latin American and Caribbean group. Um, so with that said, I will hand the floor over to them and get off the stage because I am no longer important. <laughs> so first of all, I would like to thank all of you for coming today and oh, very importantly, Michael for all his hard work over the time he's been with WISIC and all the effort has gone, that has gone into organizing not only the, um, the statutes but also involving people to get involved with WISIC, involving people to uh, uh, run for elections and um, uh, he was also a member of the election committee and worked with the election committee uh, to organize this uh, entire endeavor. So we're very grateful for his uh, for his hard work and also of all the other people in YSIG who has been involved behind the scenes. So um, on behalf of the new steering committee, we'd like to welcome you and we're very excited on, on a year ahead. We have fresh new ideas that we're excited to share with you and we'd like to get engaged and more involved. As digital nomads, we are in uh, a new era where we're living across different uh, places all over the world um, where we can engage with each other um, through, a, through an online platform and bringing together all the different activities, all the different ideas and thoughts that people present throughout the world. So we're very excited to do that. So first of all, um, I think I'll introduce myself. My name is Nadia Czechia. I'm a recent graduate from the College of Europe, um, Natalin campus where I got my uh, master's in European interdisciplinary studies with a focus as on the EU as a global actor, but specifically uh, information warfare, uh, particularly on um, the strategic narratives of global actors. I was the former vice president communications of the international not-for-profit Young European Leadership, and I have worked um, uh, primarily with youth policies and ensuring uh, that young people are trained and connected to policymakers to ensure that their ideas and their uh, thoughts are being presented on an international scale 
in uh, international forums and are being trained to ensure that their voice is presented in such a way that policymakers have to listen to us and that you feel confident in the skills that you have and in the ideas that you want to present. So then I give my, uh, uh, the, the microphone to Israel who will present himself. Thank you, Nadia, and uh, thank you, Mike, for all the hard work uh, during the um, interim committee work and also during the election committee work. You, you have a really good, good uh, follow-up. Uh, my name is Israel Rosas, for the record. I'm, um, currently, I'm working in the coordination of the national digital strategy in, in the office of the president of Mexico. Uh, I'm acting here in my individual capacity, however. Um, I'm a MAG representative on behalf of uh, Mexico as former IEF host country, and uh, I'm a member also of the Wikimedia Foundation uh, Mexico chapter. So in Mexico, I'm working also with an academic organization focused on um, outreach with uh, law students in the University of Mexico. And uh, I'm uh, very confident that we as a coalition could uh, achieve a lot of uh, results. Uh, today in the morning I was present in a dynamic coalition coordination session. Um, there are a lot of interest in the work of the dynamic coalitions inside the IEF community. We have a um, unique opportunity to show to the IEF community but also to the external people uh, what are the main topics uh, of interest for uh, young people and also, uh, what are all the opportunity areas to enhance and, and strengthen the cooperation? Uh, we know that uh, we as uh, young people uh, have uh, different backgrounds. We have uh, government people in civil society, in academic organizations, but also in private sector. So we have to work together to, to ensure that uh, the, 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 our voice will be heard. Uh, I am confident that we could uh, build bridges with our um, dear fellows from the youth observatory, but also with all the regions in the world. Uh, currently, I'm part of the youth observatory. Uh, 2018 will be my last year as an active member. As I'll be turning 31, and I'll be an observer. So um, I'm very, very confident that uh, we could uh, achieve a lot of uh, results. So uh, count with my support, with all my um, expertise, if, <laughs> if any, uh, to um, facilitate our, our work here in the Dynamic Coalition. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, uh, James and Krishna were unable to attend. Um, so, the, um, so how the steering committee works is that we represent the five regional groups of the UN. So the African group is represented by James. And James is uh, a Ugandan media practitioner and youth activist who holds a BSc computer, computer science. And since 2011, he has been writing for Global Voices Online. He also works for Metro FM Uganda, hosting a youth entertainment show aimed at building the capacities of the young people on different fronts. And, um, he was selected as Royal Commonwealth Society Associate Fellow because of his work to support and educate young people about internet use. He has also been featured on several TV shows, including Al Jazeera's The Stream and Listening Post to discuss stories that have been receiving interest on social media in Uganda. Um, also on the steering committee is, that's a good question. Um, I am terrible with pronouncing last names. Krishna Kumar. Uh, who represents the Asia Pacific group? Uh, Krishna was present here in Geneva during the week, but unfortunately he, he had to leave early. So uh, Krishna is from Chennai, India, a recent graduate from the Heritage School of Governance in Berlin with a master's degree in public policy. He also holds a master's in electronic media from the College of Engineering, Gindi. He got engaged in internet governance through the Internet Society Next Generation Leaders Program. The following year, he was elected as the secretary for the Internet Society Chennai chapter and responsible for organizing events and keeping the local community updated on the key issues of privacy, data protection, and internet governance. 
He has held several scholarships and awards in the internet governance field. Professionally, he has worked for four, for four years as a media strategist and consultant, two years at, at the Omnicon Media Group, and two years at the Densu Aegis Media Group. So um, uh, that's uh, the, the introduction of, of Krishna, and uh, thank you. As Michael mentioned beforehand, we don't have a representative of the Eastern European group. However, we love to still engage uh, people to come and join us and um, work and, and tell us what you're doing and how you would like us to get involved with these actions. Um, I've worked with the European Union and the uh, European Neighborhood, so please feel free if, if there's anything regarding those areas that you would like to discuss with me or with any of the other steering committee. Um, do not hesitate to reach out. So that being said, I would like to give like a brief overview of um, our WISIC mission and our plan for 2018. So what WISIC strive is to enable more people to join the discussion and overcome obstacles they face in doing so. Um, this, this includes monetary, but there's also experience, skill set, and network related challenges. The principle that uh, all dynamic coalitions work on is open membership, open mailing list, and open archives. So it's very easy to sign up to our mailing list. Um, um, you, any person can become a member between age of 13 and 35, otherwise you, are, you can join as an observer. And our open archives ensure that you have the transparency you need to be able to know what has been going on um, within the board and also what's going on with, uh, with um, all the activities that have been going on throughout the year. So what we want to do is empower youth who want to actively participate in IGF intersessional activities and, initi and initiative. And um, we aim to su support the IGF by having youth representation at the IGF, multi-stakeholder advisory group, and the IGF secretariat. And um, to ensure that we as young people are equal footing with other stakeholders in internet government discussions, negotiations, strategies, and processes. So there's a lot of things and a variety of things that uh, we are capable of doing in supporting your activities, um, connecting you with people, and also providing training. And this is something that we then seek to encourage and foster. That being said, um, there have been some ideas that have been floating around about the, of, uh, any ideas that WISE could do for 2018, but I would like to open the floor and ask you, what are the things that you'd be interested that WISE is going to promote um, and, and help you uh, engage with over in the upcoming year. And um, if um, you have any ideas, any suggestions, um, let us know now and something that we can work on. But also, um, uh, please, if you don't have anything now, you can post it on the mailing list directly. And there's an entire YC community that's online that wouldn't, wasn't able here today, uh, wasn't be able to be present here today that will be able to give you comments uh, on the uh, variety of, um, of different activities that you are interested in doing. So this is something that we as a, a so, oh, so I'm Katie, I'm a youth at uh, IGF fellow for ISOC, and it's something that we talked about at the morning session and that we talked about yesterday in the afternoon session. Um, but there is, we think, a need for youth to be kind of mentored from the beginning of the program and then after the program. So if there's a way to create a mentorship program um, within the IGF so that before you even get here, you can connect with somebody who's more experienced in this field, has been to the IGF before and can kind of show you the ropes, that'd be very helpful. But then also there's so many youth organizations that are doing really cool work. And if there is a way for there to be a mentorship program within those organizations, within pre-existing programs, that would be awesome. Because I know for at least me personally, um, coming for the first time, there's so much that you don't know. And you don't know the right questions to ask all the time about you know, what sh sessions should I be going to? Who should I be talking with? Like how can I network appropriately? Um, and having another youth with more experience would be really helpful. Um, and also just having some sort of network between all of the youth organizations would be really helpful as well. Um, and just see, make sure that we're not duplicating efforts, especially when we, if there's already existing programs that are doing the kind of work that we wanna do when we go back home and take these initiatives home, it'd be so useful to just tap in with them. Thank you, Kari. Yeah, indeed, uh, we need to strengthen our uh, communication with uh, 
all the youth initiatives already present. Um, about the mentoring program, uh, perhaps we could uh, propose something to the IEF Secretariat in order to uh, facilitate the, the, the work. Uh, we know also the, the Secretariat is uh, very short in resources, but we, we could uh, help them with, the, with this issue. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I, uh, Susanya Herring for the record. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a, there's a need out there for some sort of mentoring, but I also think that starting very structured programs is very time consuming. And since everyone, well, pretty much everyone is volunteering with these initiatives, uh, both for the YCIG and the national and regional ones, I think we could also implement that type of mentoring without a super structured program that would va waste, possibly waste valuable time. But um, having maybe a clear list of participants and organizing and coordinating it through the mailing list openly, because there are, even in this room, there are some of us who coming to the IGF for the second time, third time, and there are newcomers. And it should be easy enough to informally bring people together in addition to the uh, readily online sources we have. So, and, but of course it should be out in the mailing list to voting for, especially for people who aren't here right now. Uh, this is Yanis Lee speaking from the Asia Pacific region of IGF. Uh, actually my comment is similar to Sonia, which I think in this room, I guess most of us don't know each other as well. I mean, within our YCIG group, there are a lot of members and then actually we only have the mailing list, but we don't necessarily know who are on the mailing list. So I think actually that part can be improved as well if we do have a list of all the members or a little bit of background, like where they're from or what are the initiatives they're doing. I'm not sure if that, that might involve a little bit of administrative work from the committee and also like updating the website maybe. But I think that would be helpful like a repository that we can like search the members or at least we can know who to talk to and also actually the mentorship program, I think we can easily do a buddies within ourselves as well if we can coordinate ourselves, know who is going this time and, and also within the mailing list, we can like talk a little bit more before we come. So I think that would be helpful as well. Thank you. I think I'm Sandra and I'm also a youth at IGF fellow from ISOC. Um, I think one thing we were also talking about amongst ourselves was also panel diversity that it would be nice to see young people a bit more involved in panels, because um, I think that would encourage us to be more part of more panels. Hi, this is David from uh, EHAP Association, uh, also from the Asia Pacific region. Uh, for the uh, mentorship program, I think is a very awesome idea to like uh, organizing similar stuff in, in the coming year. But on top of this, I think uh, it is better to uh, have a chance to meet fa face to face, probably in maybe late, like in day zero or in, even in day one for a very short period of time. At least we can recognize each other's faces and, and for uh, the coming time, like day two and day three, we can just talk to each other to, to, to exchange some ideas. So I do think this is uh, the work we can do for the coming years. Is maybe just like a coffee makeup or even like a lightning session will be very good enough. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Kadu. I'm also a, an ISOC U fellow. And well, I think that two things could be kind of improved, at least looking at the, our program background. Well, something that could engage more youth in the panels, like Sandra said, would be something that, well, one, when we were tra when training to get to the IGF, we had, at least we had some, some kind of session, some webinars, some stuff like that. We could try to identify which are the, the main focuses of these young people that are coming here, so that we could be especially tutored and, mentor, and mentor, mentored to, to, this kind, to this focus that we are trying to reach here. I, I mean, I know that we, we got people that work with cybersecurity, with accessibility, with um, new technologies and stuff like that, and these kind of people, they may not have been able to get their schedule in order to engage, to really engage in these kind of issues. And well, maybe less mandatory sessions and more directed sessions for these kind of people would probably be help to engage like that. Another thing that we've been discussing the next, or in the last days, 
it would be something like, well, maybe a use statement with some few core points that we believe that could be improved would probably bring more attention for this youth engagement, this youth movement. I mean, well, we could try to get a written statement. We can deliver this written statement throughout our, net, our networks, translate it to our, our nature languages, try to give them to uh, our local authorities and also to these international uh, organizations like well, the, the UN itself, the, the other specialized group, not only uh, the IGF itself, but other groups that, that treat this kind of subject in the, in among each other. And well, I think that would be really good. Thank you. Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, it seems uh, very clear that uh, we have uh, diversity, not only in regional, in the regional aspect, but also in the background one. So um, we, as Youth Coalition, we have uh, an ABC for newbies. We updated it uh, every year. We also have the translations to Spanish, English, and French. Portuguese. Portuguese. Oh, okay. Sorry. And uh, and uh, the IGF schedule is also intended to show the um, interest topics uh, to uh, I don't know, but uh, perhaps we we could strengthen that. So uh, I'm not uh, taking notes because I'll review the the record, but uh, <laughs> in order to clarify that, that aspect. Uh, Thank you. A anyone else? Yes. Uh, hi. My name is uh, Emilia, and uh, I actually want—I only wanted to raise uh, the awareness on another uh, uh, youth group that was uh, present these days in the IGF, and I see a couple of uh, people already uh, here. So um, uh, I don't know if you heard about the Copy Fighters, or it's a—it's a group of young people. Uh, um, fighting for uh, fair copyright uh, laws, and I believe they would be really interested in uh, continuing uh, collabor collaboration in, in the grounds of what we have discussed uh, so far. So maybe if people are interested, we could discuss more at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Please. Hi, I'm Helena, and I'm um, from Australia, and I am also one of the youth at ISOC IGF Fellows. Um, so I already brought this up previously, but I would love if there was like a platform online that collated all of the opportunities for youth related to internet governance, just because like a lot of us had to individually find and look through all the Google links, but if you could just collate that all together on your website, that would be really great for us engaging continuously with your website and also finding a lot of opportunities that we might not have heard of. Thanks. Thank you. Mike, please. This is exciting. So my name is Michael, and I would say that one, one of the key, um, aside from programming and that sort of thing for the upcoming year, I would suggest that one thing all of us on this, uh, who, who are either part of the YCIG or want to be a part of the YCIG, really need to consider is Im ensuring that we have sustainable leadership um, embedded in, this, in, this, uh, y in the YCIG, because um, it often times, um, I would say that the duties of this, uh, that, that are embedded within being part of a dynamic coalition, unfortunately fall on, um, a few people to end up doing. And I think, um, it's, it's really not the way to, um, to really encourage, uh, leadership within the, within the committee itself. But furthermore, I'm, I'm quite frankly um, a bit worried about how, whether or not we can really stay relevant as a, as a, as a dynamic coalition and um, really stay relevant in terms of our impact on, on, you, on whether it be the IGF program or youth programming period. Because like I said, it is already difficult enough to coordinate youth at the regional level, much less at the international level. It's practically impossible. So I really, so, um, the YCIG is not just a glorified mailing list. We, we, we do have quite a few mandates, uh, including something that some of the things that have already been mentioned, such as making sure that, um, ensuring that youth are represented on panels and in workshops, et cetera. So 
I, this is not something that we can just, although it's an incredible that we finally have an elected steering committee, it's not something that, w that we can just expect them to do sp specifically on their own. They're meant to help lead the, the, the group and to do things like some of the administrative things, like coordinating with the secretariat and whatnot. But ultimately, if we want the YCIG to be successful, we all have to contribute to it. Um, the people, especially the people that are not in this room right now, the people that have been involved and engaged before. So... Um, you know, uh, it, if, if we don't represent ourselves, if we don't stand up for ourselves, nobody's going to do it for us. Nobody's going to put us on their panels. Nobody's going to. We don't need to be tokens. We don't need to be put in the corner and said, hey, look, it's, it's a youth person. Everybody's happy now. That's not the way it needs to work. And, uh, and, you know, and recruiting younger members as well is incredibly important because, I mean, I'm going to be 30 next year, and uh, my, my youthness is definitely running out quickly. So... Anyways, <laughs> ah, five more years. So, um, uh, building on that, so one of the things that uh, we as, uh, as a coordination can, can do is we can get involved with, as a dynamic coalition in writing thematic papers. We can also get involved with best practice forums. So if there is a topic perhaps that you're interested in that you want to lead, that you want to then set up a report, uh, report for that we then can present here at the, at the IGF next year, if there is a best practice forum that you as a young person want to get involved with and say, oh, hey, oh, sorry, that, I didn't expect that. Um, if you as a young person want to say, I want to get involved with the best practice forum and present the youth voice, these are things that we can help you coordinate and give you access to, but then, uh, also think of these ideas, what topics would you be interested in, what can we all collect on and, and provide input on. So uh, with that in mind, uh, please let me, uh, let me know. Um, hello everyone, I'm uh, Milos, I'm with the Advisory Council and Youth of the Council of Europe. Um, and uh, I just wanted to to raise a point that um, I think that the, the YCIG should be also a bit more open towards other youth organizations because until now, until this moment, coming to the IGF, I didn't have a clue that this, this body exists. And I am following the, the internet governance as a young person inside the Council of Europe. And I am from Southeast Europe and I saw that you have a problem with people from, from for example, Southeast Europe being uh, interested to, to follow up the, this kind of discussions. So I really think that the, um, the steering committee, and congratulations, I hope that you do a very good job next year. I think that one of the things that you maybe consider doing is approaching um, international organizations, uh, which are youth organizations such as the Scouts or some other organizations that are widely spread all around the world, or, or maybe um, regional organizations such as the European Youth Forum who are already a representation bodies of young people that can be your strong partners when it comes to advocating for, for youth visibility because these organizations are very structured so they for sure will be open uh, for, for collaboration. Uh, even in the Advisory Council I will try because we are a body of 30 young people from 47 member states of the Council of Europe. So I will transfer the message but we are also very much open for, for collaboration and we are happy to maybe invite you to share something about your work on our meetings in the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. So there is uh, ways, and I really hope that the, the, this body is a bit more open towards big main grassroots organizations in, in, in Europe and in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any others in the back? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Robert from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. Um, I was really happy to see that uh, this exists, although I didn't know very much about it until more or less today. Um, I was wondering if you guys do, or like if it's an organization that wants to do a lot more outreach and increase the membership, because um, I, you know, like just the fact that I didn't know anything about it on the schedule, there was nothing in the description of the, of the session. So I wasn't sure if it was something that was meant to be very closed or, you know, you wanted to get more people in, we want to get more members. Um, that's just a, yeah, just the point I uh, wanted to raise. Um, I thought it's really good that you're including under 35s instead of like under 30 or something like that. I turned 30, so it, it helped me. Um, but it also, I think it, it speaks to a point that I, um, I've noticed this week, because I think um, people who are like in my category of like 
30 to 35. We're kind of like stuck in the middle. So we're not really thought of as youth, but also not old enough to be taken seriously by, you know, older senior people. So I think, you know, I think that's a good thing. Um, and I think including and making, you know, people in that age um, feel welcome would be like a good selling point for this, uh, for this organization. So that's it. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, does anyone else want to add some or have any questions? Yeah, this is Dave again. Um, I just want to add on the point that Michael had mentioned about uh, the function of the uh, YCIG. I think, uh, first, I'd really like to uh, congratulate there's a interim, not, not interim, but a real steering committee have been like, at that bridge right now. We can doing the administration work. Uh, based on the discussion in the past year, we do think that our steering committee have the role of like doing the administration and have the coordination, but not like, uh, raising the initiative by, by uh, the steering committee itself. So it's really relied on every one of uh, the members in the YCIG group to, to raise your concerns or even uh, initiate some new initiative from all of us uh, and pass it to uh, the steering committee to help the coordination. So I, I do really en encourage every one of us if we have like any new initiative or um, some other activities that we want to do together, we can just pass it to the steering committee and with the collaboration work, we can work it better. Because there are some good examples in the past, uh, for example, some ad hoc documents we would like to submit to some international <coughs> organizations like uh, the VISIT, is it? Uh, the VISIT one. Uh, so I think there's some, some good examples we have to do in, in the past and this is the be best practice we, we can follow in, in the coming days. Thank you. Um, any Hi, my name is uh, Alke Bos, organizer of the Dutch Youth IGF. Um, and what I noticed the last three years of being involved is that IGF is, um, or internet, govern I internet governance events itself are traveling around the world. And that's a good thing because on that way you can get more locals involved in these events. Um, but I guess the lack of this for is, is that if an event is in a country or a city itself, the locals do not uh, or are not aware of the fact that such an event is in their country, city, or even in their street. Um, so I guess um, for all of us, if such event is in our country, our uh, city, or whatever, reach out to more locals and um, get in touch with universities um, to get more people involved and not only a little cluster of youngsters who are lucky enough to travel, but um, yeah, also we have to make this more sustainable so that everyone or can be involved. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is it morning? I think it's afternoon, afternoon everybody. Uh, my name is Brian, also a fellow from ISOP. Uh, my main concern um, or the comment that I want to make is on um, diversity and uh, most probably uh, a little bit uh, on sustainability. So um, I think I've been to one of the sessions about the gender issues and um, uh, looks like uh, we've got a few females in the in these movements. So one of the points that uh, was raised was that um, we should um, at least encourage uh, young girls at a young age to participate in such events. Um, and, and also, um, I see we're talking about uh, increasing the capacity of these movements. Uh, we usually talk about um, Europe and uh, a little bit of China that side, we tend to skip Africa and it's like there's nothing happening there. I don't know what um, structures do you have there that you're able to connect through Af uh, Africa so that you can increase the, the capacity of these young movements. Also on sustainability, um, my colleague here mentioned something about sustainability. Um, I think yesterday we had another meeting uh, which was proposed that for us to have a sustainable uh, movement is to um, also include 
uh, some mentors uh, training sessions so that they're able to maintain their relationship uh, with the mentee uh, for, for, for them to at least not lose the contact and not lose the motivation to keep on uh, doing whatever projects they've been doing. Um, I think that's it for now. I'm still thinking of other points that I might uh, get uh, as, we, as we move through the session. Thanks. Great, thank you so much for your, uh, for your comments. Uh, I really wish that James was here today, and uh, if you would like to, definitely he'll be reading the transcript of today's session, and we'll have a discussion based on my notes and, and the discussion that we're having today. But if you would love to get in touch with him, and uh, you know, if any ideas of how you want to raise the profile of Africa, and, uh, and, and raise the profile of YSIG to ensure that people in Africa are getting more involved in this, then absolutely we would love uh, your insight and your help, and we can uh, really work on this. Um, I have heard a, a lot of very good ideas, um, and, and I'm really, I, I'm kind of really excited that you want to see these things because it means that you're passionate about what you're what you're doing and how you want to get engaged with it, and that you're not, you know, in essence, being selfish. That you want to spread this to other people and getting other people involved, and that that really that really warms me, to be honest, because now uh, we need to come together and really we talked about uh, you know divers, uh, uh, diversity and sustainability, and that's in basically the essence of what we're trying to do and ensuring that uh, we, as, uh, as, as a young specialist, are getting engaged on these panels. On, on, uh, this is something I mentioned before in the week. Unlike um, some of, of the panelists who have a broad scope, a broad mandate, while we're studying, we're really focusing for three to five years on specific topics, uh, on really working on the details. Uh, we should not allow uh, that these details are being missed on, on the larger scale. And I think that we have a really good position here to do this. So we've talked about recruitment, and this is something that um, we would love to work on ourselves, but also we would like to encourage you. So one of the things I would like to do today is to take a group photo that we're going to post on our Facebook group. And I would love for you guys to say, hey, uh, to share this and say, hey, come and join us next year, or come and join my event, which I'm holding at this date, or come and join the mailing list, or whatever you feel comfortable with, um, uh, with, with sharing your, your own theme. Uh, if you want to pro even promoting your own thing, like, hey, we are a group of young people, specialists that are doing an event next week come and see us. This is uh, one thing of trying to engage other people and bringing people from your community uh, also with us. Um, I heard you about sustainability and capacity building, about mentorships, face-to-face um, -face meetings, and uh, despite us all being kind of digital nomads, the face-to-face -face meetings, perhaps one thing that we could consider if people were interested, having this session at the beginning of the week, um, so there, after the IGF newbie session, that's on day zero, on the first official day, we can have a session like this that people can come, uh, that you get to know each other. We can ask volunteers who want to be mentors for the, for the week that you can approach them or to have lunch with if you're lonely. And, um, you know, sitting together and, and, and talking things through. And then also, like, at the end of the session, if you're struggling with your um, with your with your program, we can ask people from the IGF Secretariat, or we can ask, uh, um, you know, people from from the other institutions to say, hey, what do you recommend, or a specialist in your field? You just need to let us know what do you require. Um, when we're talking about um, capacity building and skill sets, um, connecting, the, the motion that connecting with uh, other youth forums would be very helpful in this. Knowing what they do and how we can build on, on top of that would allow us to move forward and making sure that we encompass the skills that you need rather than the skills that we think that might be useful for a particular person or a particular idea that we have about people. So here it relies a lot on feedback and this is why we have the mailing list. You'll be able to engage on the mailing list and say, hey, this is what we need. And also, um, a participation at IGFs, especially for young people, is primarily dependent on scholarships and funding that is provided to us. So the people here, uh, we have been extremely blessed by the, the society that has uh, come together to provide these opportunities for us. And for those people who have been able to find and uh, the, you know, the passion to arrive here on, on your own, I am very grateful that you have been really engaged to be able to be here. So 
we have to reach out to our mailing list and ensure that they also have the opportunity. And what you're saying about creating opportunities and making this more public, we hope the next time that we'll have a, a, a bigger session because this room needs to be fuller and we need to have bigger rooms for this. And I hope that we can all engage with this. The last thing I would like to say is, please do think about writing a thematic paper, a thematic report. I think being involved with best practice forums would be an incredible opportunity to say exactly, hey, this is important. And we have this unique position to do this, but we're not gonna write it for you. Uh, apparently I'm setting up a website and we're going to send out recruitment letters and we want to do all these things. So, and we also have different mm -hmm. specialities. Mm -hmm. Let's bring that all together to be able to do this. I, um, we have a little bit of time left, so I would love to take this photo with all of you. And thank you so much for your time for coming here today. And uh, we're very excited to work with you in the upcoming year. Thank you so much. Can I make one last uh, announcement? The, uh, apart from the transcripts, uh, there will be a live report of the session on uh, Geneva Internet Platform's Digital Watch. So if anyone wants to like uh, share it or take a look at the notes there, uh, a session report will be online with today or tomorrow.